hello everyone and welcome to this recursive flood fill algorithm tutorial and uh you know i'll be showing you exactly how to set up a small very simple recursive flood fill algorithm for any grid based things that you might want or anything else uh let's get started first thing we're going to do is just make a private game object and call it like something prefab tile or whatever you want to call it it's just going to be a prefab like a prefab game object uh, we're also going to serialize it but we're going to make it private because we don't want other classes to kind of change or alter this or really have access to it because it's not really needed um next up we're going to define uh essentially two ints that are going to be our x size and y size which is the height and width of the board um so next up, we're going to make a 2D array of game objects, which essentially is just going to let us access uh, the game object directly by just inputting the position it is in the 2D array. Uh, so in the start method, we can go ahead and just call create board, which is the function we're going to make uh, in a second. We're going to pass X size and Y size to this to define the width and height of the board. So for the create board method, we're just going to pass in a width and a height. Then we're going to take that grid variable that we made at the start and we're going to set it to a new game object and we're going to, you know, pass in the width and height of the board that we've already defined. This is essentially just going to uh, define how big our array is going to be. If you're not familiar with arrays, it needs to know how big it's going to be. Um, so you can use lists and, and other things like that to have dynamic, you know, essentially arrays uh, or lists of objects, but arrays need to be defined. But moving on, now we're going to define a new local variable called start position. And this is essentially just to center the tiles so they're relative to like the local origin point of your parent object, which is the board manager in this case. Uh, we're just going to set this to this dot transform dot position. And uh, then we're going to do a double for loop looping through the uh, X size and then the Y size. Uh, and then we're going to define essentially a new local variable called tile. And then this is just going to be instantiate our prefound tile. Now we're going to set the tile.transform parent to this transform, which just, I don't know, neatly tucks them under the board manager rather than just having them open in the hierarchy. Now, next up, we're going to make a new little function. Uh, I did this just to keep it a little bit more tidy. It's essentially just going to be a function that returns a vector two. Um, now that vector two will then be equals to uh, tile dot get component sprite renderer and then we're getting the bounds and the size of that bounding box uh which will just you know return as a vector too uh same for the y and then stay for the x And we're going to use this in tile.transform.position. Tile.transform.position should be equal to a new vector two of start x plus the get size of the prefab tile, right? So we'll take the x and times it by x and we'll get the y and times it by y. And this essentially just ensures that we get, um, we, we take the existing width of each tile and we just offset each tile by its own width, essentially in either direction. And then finally, we're going to take our grid variable that's just set to the grid array. Uh, we're going to set this to tile, uh, which we already established earlier, which is the instantiate prefab tile. So uh, this is all you need for creating a simple little board. And then next up, we're going to delve into the actual flood tile algorithm now that we have a board to play with. Let's see if what we've written so far actually works. Um, we can create an empty game object called the board manager. Um, and then I find the size to be appropriate around 25 for each. Uh, we'll make a little prefab with any kind of sprite that you want. Uh, you can also use 3D objects. There's nothing wrong with that. And then, and then pop that into the uh, prefab tile slot. Uh, so I found the camera angle to be good at around 15, 15 and minus 35 on the set axis. Uh, if you're around 25 tiles, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It looks good. Uh, works wonders. Let's move on. So for the next part, let's go ahead and make a new script and we'll just call it flood fill or whatever. Um, it's up to you. So what we're going to need for this part is uh, a coroutine. So essentially if you're actually applying this to like a real project and you actually need a fast recursive flood fill algorithm, you're not going to use a coroutine, but for the purpose of this tutorial, 
and to make it a little bit more satisfying to uh, to look at rather than just in the blink of an eye, uh, we're going to have to make an, uh, a coroutine. So for that, we're going to need some kind of delay. So we'll just make a private float, um, call it fill delay, set it to like 0 0.2 as a default, and then uh, we'll also just serialize it. And then we're going to need a uh, like a private board manager uh, reference. So in our start method, we can go ahead and just say board equals to uh, this get component because we're going to put this script on the same component. Uh, you might not, but I'm going to do uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So now for the actual flood flow algorithm, uh, we're going to set up a private IE enumerator. Uh, we'll just call it flood because this I stupidly named my script flood fill, uh, which I was going to use for the function, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to pass in an X and then Y um, and then a old color and a new color. So essentially we're going to swap the old color of the tile uh, with the new color of the tile that we give it. Um, we'll set up a small local variable called weight. Uh, we'll set it to new wait for seconds and then we'll pass in the fill delay, uh, which is the how many seconds we're going to wait. Uh, now we need to check if we're inside the bounds of the grid. Uh, we're going to do that by, uh, you know, just checking if X is greater or equal to zero and X is less than board uh, X size and the same for Y. And then we're going to yield return weight. Now, if you're not familiar with coroutines, there's a bunch of tutorials out there I would highly recommend watching. So essentially, we're just going to wait a number of seconds before we continue. It's a bit more complicated than that, but as I said, there's a bunch of tutorials on this kind of stuff. And then we're going to introduce a uh, an if check. Uh, essentially, now we're going to introduce an if check that essentially just checks if the tile uh, has the same as the old color, right? So if, if the color of the tile is the same as the old color that we want to swap out, um, then uh, you know we can run the code. So if that's the case, then we'll go ahead and just set that color to the new color, and then we'll recursively call um, the the flood flow algorithm. So we'll just start a new call routine uh, up one uh, to the left and uh, to the right and then down. Right. So it's pretty standard. Um, it's not much more to it. Uh, but we want to be able to call this in the game. So, if, you know, simply I'm going to just introduce an if check in the update method. Uh, so input get key down, we're going to set it to F. And then we're going to set X to be a random range between zero and the X size, uh, which is essentially just going to be our seed. So in the flood flow algorithm, we're passing an X and Y. So these are the coordinates of the first tile that we start uh, flood filling from. So in this update method, um, I'm essentially just making it a random tile. Uh, you can specify whatever tile you want. Um, I just chose to choose a random integer between the X size uh, and the Y size. So, and then I introduce another check, uh, essentially just checking if the color is not white, uh, well then we wanna make sure it is white because essentially if the seed doesn't land on a white tile in the start, it won't flood fill because it doesn't flood fill on any tiles that aren't uh, equal to the old color and we're passing in color white as the old color. So I'm just essentially, before I call the flood flow algorithm, I'm just setting any tile we land on to white to make sure that it has a starting point. That's pretty much it. Now, there's one little thing. So essentially, I'm going to go back to the board manager script and I'm going to set a private function called color tile. And this was essentially just color uh, our tiles because we want to set up some walls and some obstacles for our flood fill algorithm to avoid or, um, you know, kind of wrap around or whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, make a little function where you say color tile, which lets us color any tile uh, on the board. Uh, specified by a couple of parameters, X, Y, and the color we want to change it to. In the start method of the board manager script, we're just going to do a double for loop. And then we're going to introduce an if check, which is just like a random value between, uh, essentially we're just checking here if, um, essentially uh, this is going to act as a, like a 20% chance of actually turning any tile that we, uh, in the grid into uh, black, right? Which will act as wall, our walls. Now you could do a bunch of different things. You can specify like a little, uh, you can split the board in the middle by just coloring um, the middle 
of your board. So you could do it in any number of ways. You could do whatever you wanted, but, and uh, here we have it. So this is our flood flow algorithm. It will now find any tile that is white, that is has access to, and then turn it red, um, which, you know, so, it's going to be much faster if you drop the core routine. Uh, but if you do introduce the core routine yourself, then you could animate it uh, a little bit more smoothly as well with, like, with some twenty libraries or whatever you might feel like. Now, I just want to thank everyone for um, sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, if you thought it was helpful, uh, please leave a like and a comment telling me what I can improve on and whatever else you want to see in the future. Now, the thing is, though, right, I have this Patreon. Right. And you can go check it out and you don't have to like give me money or anything, but you just, you can just look at it, you know, like, man, it's, it's there. You could be like, you could be like one of the few people that be like, you know what? I know that for a fact this exists. Um, uh, but you know, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And, um, you know, I'll see you in the next tutorial in like 50 years or whatever.